Some of the other demonstration videos have talked about some cool ways that you can use pipeline binding to feed things from one command to the next. And one of the examples you saw was feeding computer names to a command. That's great except when the command isn't set up to take input that way. For example, let's look at help for get WMI object. As always, the full help here. Now this does have a computer name parameter. And I can totally see the value in getting a bunch of computers from Active Directory, feeding their names to get WMI object, and letting get WMI object go contact those computers and retrieve some management information. Looking at the computer name parameter of get WMI object, though, I'm a little disappointed because it's not set up in PowerShell version 2 to accept pipeline input. So I can't do a trick like this. See, what I'm doing here is getting all the computers from Active Directory. Instead of keeping any of the properties that came from the directory, I'm just taking the name property and turning it into a computer name property. And that's the only thing getting fed to get WMI object. And it's interesting, but it's not going to help. Because get WMI object's computer name parameter isn't looking at the pipeline to receive this input. So if I actually run this, it's going to more or less run fine, but it's oh, only going to get information from my local computer. It's telling me that, hey, I saw you sent me an input object, but I can't bind it to any parameters because I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's OK. We can do another trick. Uh, let's do this same goal, get my object for the class Win32BIOS. And for the computer name, I'm going to use some parentheses. Now, if you recall from some of the demonstrations in the earlier chapters, parentheses forces PowerShell to execute whatever's inside them first. And the result of that will get fed to the computer name parameter. So here's where I'm going to get all of my AD computers. You might want to filter that for something else, or even have it start in a particular organizational unit. And I'm going to use select object and ask it to expand the name property. So this is going to get objects that have a bunch of properties, including a name property. This is going to take that name property and pull out just its value. So just the actual computer names, the strings of letters and numbers and underscores or whatever, are coming out of this. That's the result of this parenthetical expression, a bunch of computer names. They get fed to the dash computer name parameter, and if I've done everything right, it went out to that computer and got the information. One of those computers is actually turned off, so what we're seeing right now is get WM object trying to talk to it, but it is going to time out after it discovers, after about 30 or 45 seconds, that that computer was not online. If I had specified more computer names, then WM object would keep trying, uh, but in this case, that was the last one, and so that's the end of the command. This idea of getting computer names in parentheses will work with any computer name parameter, even one like this one, that's not rigged up to take pipeline input. So this is a great technique to remember because it's one that you can use in pretty much any circumstance where you have a computer name parameter.